Many people know that McDonald's is one of the largest purchasers of chicken and beef in the world, selling millions of Big Mac patties and McChicken sandwiches every day. But many people have never heard the name of its behind-the-scenes supplier, OSI. OSI has plants in many different countries and supplies meat for every single McDonald's in the world. These factories produce and package millions of patties every day, which are then flash frozen and sent to McDonald's franchises everywhere, ready to be warmed and served with pickles, a special sauce and sesame seed buns. Despite its relative obscurity, OSI is one of the largest private companies in the United States. OSI functions under the leadership of Sheldon Lavin, an 88-year-old executive chairman who owns majority stake in the $6.3 billion company. Lavin rarely speaks to the press, which makes him an excellent behind-the-scenes partner, not only for McDonald's, but for other high-profile companies like Oscar Mayer, Whole Foods and Chipotle, to which he annually sends £45 million of steak, barbacoa, carnitas, sofritas, beans and salsa. Impossible Foods, a soy-based imitation meat company that makes impossible waffles for Burger King and Starbucks morning sandwiches are both newer customers, having joined only a year ago in 2020. OSI Start is closely intertwined with McDonald's. In 1909, Otto Kolschwoski, a German immigrant, opened a butcher business in the Chicago suburbs. 46 years later, after a fateful handshake between Kolschwoski's son and McDonald's franchise agent, Ray Kroc. Things really took off. Kroc had just opened the first McDonald's restaurant in Des Plaines, Illinois, and Otto and Sons was the franchise's first fresh hamburger meat supplier. McDonald's expanded across the country, and so did its suppliers. Within a decade, it had 150 different suppliers regularly delivering fresh meat. In the late 1960s, innovation in flash freezing technology created a new opportunity for Otto and Sons. Cryogenic flash freezing allowed McDonald's to cut their suppliers down to only five single suppliers, one of which being its first supplier, Otto & Sons. However, the small family company did not immediately have the capacity to fulfill all of the franchise's needs and would have to build its first industrial-scale meat production factory with enough freezer capacity to meet McDonald's huge demand. But to do so, this family would first need to raise the money. That's why in 1970, it hired Lavin, a 38-year-old banker, to help them find out how to fund the project. He got them their money and the brother was so impressed that he offered Lavin a share in the company. He declined at the time, but when the older Otto retired a decade later, Lavin joined full-time as a partner and assumed a one-third ownership stake. He was appointed CEO soon after and Otto and Sons was renamed OSI. When one of the sons chose to sell his part a decade later, Lavin became a half-owner. He later bought out the other son as well. Lavin was the driving force behind OSI's decision to pursue McDonald's into international markets. As the Iron Curtain crumbled, it began with factories in German and Spain, in Latin America and finally Eastern Europe. He began travelling across the world to determine which countries had the infrastructure for McDonald's to expand the next knowing that as McDonald's expanded internationally, so would OSI. Lavin described his expansion strategy during this time to the Harvard Business Review with the statement, Every time McDonald's entered a new country, they connected with locomotive and pulled their supply chain along with them. Lavin's business strategy was to rise with McDonald's. He says in one interview, We attempted to keep up with McDonald's and get as much as we could. He determined that the best way to keep the relationship with McDonald's strong was to McDonaldize OSI. Lavin explains why they used the term McDonaldize in an interview. We used the term McDonaldize because we were aware of McDonald's objectives. We were familiar with the system and what the firm required and knew how to cope with them. McDonaldization saw Lavin also venturing into new areas such as producing lettuce in China and developing the chain's first chicken nuggets and circular bacon for burgers in order to keep his biggest client pleased. Lavin's strategy was capital intensive, but that played to his strengths given his background as a banker. He knows how to collect money and expand his company. Chuck Jolly, co-founder of the Meat Hall of Fame ads, he knew more about that aspect than anyone else running a meat business. He was smart enough to think 10 years ahead in the industry that doesn't like to go that far ahead. Although Lavin recognized McDonald's as one of OSI's integral clients, he knew he wouldn't be able to ride on McDonald's cocktails indefinitely. OSI began taking on new clients in 1992. Within eight years, 
another client that included KFC and Pizza Hut, as well as packaged food companies like ConAgra, Tesco, and Nestle, which combined and accounted for 15% of OSI sales, or $650 million. Expanding and extending the business was maybe the single most exciting thing, Laban said in 2013. I'm proud of the fact that we're moving throughout the world, bringing the OSI culture with us, all while growing our McDonald's business to where it is now. Expansion and growth went well for OSI up until 2014 when a major scandal broke out of one of its Chinese factories. OSI had just finished its ninth factory in China, which cost more than $750 million in total, when an undercover expose from Dragon TV revealed workers changing sell-by dates on already expired frozen beef and reprocessing McDonald's chicken nuggets. Food safety inspectors in China shut down the plant right after, arrested six OSI executives and launched an inquiry against the company. The probe stretched on for nearly two years and the Chinese government imprisoned some OSI executives for 17 months. The procedure was openly challenged by OSI, but Laban never talked publicly about it again. OSI was fined $365,000 and 10 of its officials were prosecuted, with selling inferior products and condemned to prison at the end of the trial in 2016. What happened is utterly unacceptable, Laban said shortly afterwards. I'm not going to try to justify or explain it. It was horribly wrong, and I'm ashamed that it occurred in the firm I own. McDonald's, which was already acquiring additional hamburger meat from two of the world's largest meat suppliers, JBS of Brazil and Cargill of Minneapolis, halted OSI, as did Yum Brands, parent of KFC and Pizza Hut. As a result of the scandal, as well as a slow global appetite for fast food, the company suffered a hit. McDonald's declined to comment on the scandal, although analysts and Forbes believe that sales have remained steady at OSI for four years after doubling between 2010 and 2013, and that while the incident with the China factory halted growth for OSI, their sales remained consistent. In 2019, OSI made a deal with Impossible Foods to make plant-based whoppers and other items which helped the company recover from the scandal, boosting revenues by $200 million to an estimated $6.3 billion. It's ironic that the longest-serving McDonald's hamburger maker would be hired to make plant-based burgers for Burger King supplier, but Impossible Foods had no other choice. Impossible Foods CEO Pat Brown went to OSI when it ran out of its distinctive artificial meat ahead of its initial grocery store debut in 2020. We learned a hard lesson last year, the CEO over Zoom had said, as he explains his decision to outsource his product manufacturing to another company. Brown's choice of OSI came after great deliberation. He frequently traveled from Palo Alto to the Chicago suburbs to meet, Lavin and examine some of the facilities. Brown says that scaling a product like ours is really challenging, and he knew that if he was going to outsource production of impossible foods, he had to do it with a company with a proven track record that he was confident and could handle all of the production challenges of such a unique product. The pandemic is posing new hurdles for OSI, just as they are finding a new foothold post-scandal. According to McDonald's earning report released in July, global sales at McDonald's, which is still likely OSI's top customer, are down more than 20% for the year. In addition, at least one of OSI's plants, a breakfast meats and sausage supplier in Chicago, was forced to shut down after experiencing a COVID-19 epidemic, with 30 of the company's 500 employees testing positive. Lavin, whose 55-year-old wife died in 2009, will not reveal his succession plans. He is the father of three grown children, none of whom are employed at OSI. However, OSI executives believe he will die before retiring. The only person I answer to is the one I see in the mirror every morning, he previously told Meat Trade Publication National Provisioner.